Hey, what's up? Just uh, finishing let, cooking some lunch for the little ones. Let me make sure uh, I let you guys talk to everyone. <clears throat> what's up, dude? What's up, man? What's up, man? How you feeling? Doing all right. It's good. You can chat with everyone. We're just going to do something relaxed. People have questions. They can ask us questions. Um, this isn't being recorded, so let me record. It says recording. Oh, it is? I mean, it says uh, it in the top left corner. Of yeah. It's should be recording for me, too. Okay. Fantastic. I set it up right then. Cool. Harry Otto. What's up, man? What's up, Harry? Eric. It's Susan. Let's just give people time to stumble yeah, on in. Oh, it's a beautiful day here in Costa Rica. Might as well brag and see if I can get to my window. Give me a moment. Give me a moment and we'll just do this. You guys see? Mm -hmm. This is a, a rainy season day in Costa Rica. That's what it looks. That's what the morning usually looks like. So, welcome rainy season. Every morning is usually like this: nice and cool, nice breeze. Uh, it's about seventy-two, seventy-three right now. And I'm going to close the window because it's close the blinds because it's too much light. But it's just gorgeous, man. Doesn't get hot. Doesn't get too cold. Damn near perfect weather. I like the bag. How about Costa Rica weather? How close am I to the ocean? It depends on which ocean you're talking about because we got both, Harry. Straight that way would be the Pacific. So that's oh, about an hour and 15 minutes. And going that way, I'm about two. Well, it depends because that, that, they're doing work on that highway that takes you to uh to the caribbean so it can take two hours two hours and 15 minutes or if you have to go the other way it can take three hours but yeah i can go to either coast and it well, actually i can go to both on on the same day which is really cool the best of both worlds down here i'm up in in the central valley so the temperature is mild year round. It doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold. Um, the the mean average temperature year round is seventy two degrees. So it's not going to get much higher than eighty eight, and it's not going to get much colder than fifty nine, fifty eight, maybe once a year. Uh, that's usually in December when the trade winds change. Or we get an Arctic blast from you guys. But that's once or twice a year that I'll break out the sheets to, to sleep. Otherwise, you don't even need that. Just I, I use pajama shorts and a t-shirt, and that's all I need for sleeping. 
and no air conditioning other than for my computer and no so no air conditioning no heating bills <laughs> but you do need air conditioning if you're on the coast it's hot anyway ed i don't know if you had anything for the people or or if you guys have questions for us be happy to answer them um, just go, go in the q a yeah, let me just jump in real quick and say, yeah, we're going to keep it casual today. We're open to any Q&A. Uh, we imagine what some of the Q&A will be, especially uh, since we've been waiting on a content module video from me. I know people are interested in that module, so we can show a little bit of that today, answer live questions. And yeah, uh, sorry, I'm not on video. I just have a, a kid in each arm today, and we are working multitasking. So um I will come back at everyone in streaming, full streaming form soon. But um, another thing that I wanted to say to everyone, and I think it's important that you hear this as a big update. So anybody who purchased the software from the original charity webinars, we've had a few people uh, transition over, but obviously we have to get everybody transitioned over because we have upgraded the entire back end of the system and the reason we did it now is so that we don't have to or hopefully don't have to annoy you in the future right um because we have the capacity now to handle a lot more users and to give you formalized training and to help you keep your receipts and subscription organized and your serial numbers and all that stuff so we just needed a better management system in place for our users and that is now in place so if you are on the older subscription from charity webinar days we will get you moved over um, obviously we will hold pricing and promises that we have made from that webinar series and then moving forward as we add more and more users everybody's going to be in the new environment because again um, if you're familiar with uh, heavy hitter club and the the trainings there uh, you know we're doing something similar where everybody will have in-depth training access, lots of videos uh, to come, uh, especially, you know, I think people are now interested in, in where the software came from, right? And where the research, uh, why we even did all this, right? So we're gonna keep those videos rolling. And if you haven't, like I said, or if you have an issue with your serial number or something comes up with the software, just let us know there's a chance that you have to migrate over. If you're a new person, welcome, obviously. Uh, we're here to answer your questions. We're here to show you a little bit of that third and final module. I have the content module videos uh, for you guys filmed. We just have to get them onto YouTube and we'll keep the education rolling. So uh, by all means, fire away if you have them. If Margot or Rob have anything else to say, Rob, but for the record, is going to be doing a little bit of, he's going to be my hands at the moment uh, if we demo any of the software. And then I'll hop on uh, when and if I can in a few minutes uh, on my own machine. But I just wanted to make sure that he can do the software demoing. I can talk through everything, answer questions. And then obviously all three of us are here to answer any content strategy questions or software questions or whatever you guys want to throw at us. We're just going to leave it, uh, as Marco said, pretty casual, open-ended. So. Roofing Jacksonville, Florida. Rob. We have a suggestion so, from Harry Otto. I'm going to jump right in on Harry's thing too. Um, we're going to want to probably look at that in two different ways, Harry, because the software, you know, if roofing is your keyword, right? Like that's your highest level concept. We're going to want to look at that. And then we're going to want to look at Jacksonville, Florida separately from that. Um, it's not that you couldn't, run a huge long tail like that but really our software is designed to go for the highest level because the software itself is breaking concepts down so you want to start at your highest level concept to get the most data and the most accurate data possible so yeah your keyword or your targets are roofing so we can definitely do a roofing example and then if you're trying to market to the jacksonville area then you could run jacksonville uh, and see what the software had to say about that as well, because it's going to give you that geo information, that geo data. So um, we could do 
that for sure. An e-com example for Derek. I'm just seeing these things come in in the webinar chat. Yeah, but an, an e-com needs the market level key, what I call the yeah. market level keyword. Yeah, so what type of e-com as we're throwing together some examples here? Just what, so we know. Yeah, general niche. It doesn't yeah, have to be your, a... your niche, just a general right. niche. Yep. And guys, for people asking questions, this may help, right? So, well, I'm going to make an assumption here. You could change if the assumption's wrong. But what I'm saying is, if a lot of you guys deal with clients or you're working on a website, you have something in mind. You don't just decide, hey, I want to do an e com website, right? So you wouldn't just research e com website to figure out what you're wanting to sell and what you need to put on your website. This is just a tool to help you with that research in a way, right? And help with content. So when you're asking questions for examples, think of it in that same way, right? Or if you have a customer call you and say, hey, can you make me an e com website? Obviously, your first question is, okay, well, that you're going to have to narrow down e com. Right? Are you meaning, you know, widgets? Are you meaning snowboards? Are you meaning fishing poles? Are you meaning, you know, lawnmowers? Right? Because that's where you'd start your research is with that term, like your top term. So kind of like Ed said, with the roofing, Jacksonville, Florida. Right? That's like your, to me, that sounds like someone's trying to do a GBP ranking in a map. But your true term for that is roofing. So you want to talk about everything roofing on your website. To make it roofing Jacksonville, Florida, you just add the word Jacksonville, Florida sprinkled in there type of thing. And then you add pages to your website about Jacksonville, Florida to get the geo relevance going on your website. I hope that helps at least clarify for when you guys are asking for questions. It'll help us better demo and answer based on the way that you um, ask the question. So. Hey Rob. Yes. Can we get you to share screen and we can we can run with the roofing demo and then we can do the ecom uh, demo based on when we get that mm -hmm. answer back. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't mind, will you run an analysis for roofing? The first one, will you do the normal that I always do, which is twenty five nodes with five secondary nodes, and then will you run a second one? that's much, much smaller that we could use in the content module. So for example, maybe it's just two nodes and two nodes. So that way we can generate a couple of posts and show people how the content's being outputted to a folder eventually towards the end of this. Yeah, so can you guys see my screen? I'm assuming I'm yes, sharing the right thing. See this content maxima thing? Okay, so what Ed's saying is first you're gonna come in and you're gonna do the analysis. I'll back up and say, when you first open this, it's gonna ask you to put in your license key your open API key, all that stuff. I've already done that ahead of time. Um, when you open it, it'll it, it'll give you errors if you don't and say, hey, please go do that. You can go right here to settings. Here's where you put in your license and here's where you put in your open API key. So just as an aside, I've already done those steps. So, so if we do analysis, you're gonna click on the analysis. We're gonna do, what we say, riffing? Riffing, riffing yes. And you wanna do a 25 and five. And we hit start. So what you're going to see is you input that, and you'll see here in the the terminal. It's what this is called, coding wise. But it's done. It'll kind of give you an idea of what's going on. And if you get error messages, it'll give you an error message uh, for when you contact. If you have to contact support, a lot of times if you see an error message that says OpenAI did not respond, then it's just a rerun because we can't control if OpenAI doesn't respond. No matter how many times you email us or whatever, it's just sometimes since we're using OpenAI's uh, API, if they fail to send the information back, there's nothing really we can do on our end. So it just kind of has an FYI. But so I'll move this out of the way. So if it, if it's ours, it, it usually shows a, a T Kinter error, right? That, that's the error message. We usually well, it'll see. still partially. You got to dig into it because it's going to show you it started here and it, it kind of goes through it started in the t kinter and it went to this function then this function this normally it's the last one it tells you is the exact place it messed up but i'm just suggesting people if you have an error 
and you see something in here that says open AI or API or something like that, just try to run a, another one and see, because a lot of times that's where the errors happen. Because once code works, normally it works, unless you start doing some crazy stuff, because this is only in English. We've had some issues with that. Anyway, what's, what I, what's what I usually do, yeah, what I usually do, just shut it all down and start it up again. I mean, yeah. I just close everything down. That That usually resets it, and I can connect to the API again. Yeah. But what I'm wanting to tell people is this is English. It doesn't it doesn't work with other languages. I don't care if you come in here and put a different language word, it's going to mess up because different languages will bring back different words that have different I don't know, what do you call a tilde? You know how they got the tilde over the a tilde. The ends and the yeah. right? Well, Python doesn't like those things. So then it craps out, right? Unless you do a lot of coding to fix all those things and strip them out and on and on. So that's, that's what I'm saying. Even if you buy it and you put in a Spanish word, it may work every now and then, but just to be aware. So it does the execution complete. Once it's complete, since I did an analysis scan, it'll create a folder. Here's our analysis for roofing. And it creates this pivot table. Can you see that all right? Is it too small? A little bit bigger. Yeah, zoom just there. Perfect. That better? Yeah. Yep. So here in the nodes, it just basically gives you the raw data. Here's the keyword you put in. Here's the primary node, right? So roofing materials, and here's the five secondary nodes that go along with roofing materials, right? This kind of makes it hard to like mentally do this. So I had it create a pivot table. So now you can see here is my keyword. Here's for flat roofing, and here's the terms that go with that, right? Some terms will overlap, right? Because obviously they're going to overlap somewhat because you're all about roofing, like roofing materials, I think was the term. Yeah, roofing materials can be connected to roofing, roof installation, you know, stuff like that. So you still got to, you know, this, you still got to do work on here. But basically what you get is according to um, OpenAI and the way that we program the prompts, if you give it this word, let's see, collapse, entire field. Here's the 25 top terms, right, related to that term. And you can kind of scroll down, you can see them all. So on a site for roofing, you're going to want to talk about all these terms, right? And then let's say, okay, well, roof repair. On a page for roof repair, you're going to want to mention these terms because when you're doing roof repair, normally there's an inspection. There's different leak repairs. There's the replacement. You want to check about contractors and the materials used to repair the roof, right? If you do roof installation, you know, here's the different things for roof installation you'll want to cover on a page about roof installation, if you're doing roof replacement, here's the different things you want to talk about for replacement, that type of thing. So that's the analysis part of this. And is there anything else you want to add to that before I? Um, Derek was just asking if the if the system makes the pivot table. So yeah, our yes. the reason this is a good a good uh, question for a couple of reasons. So. The pivot tables automatically being created by the software after it retrieves all of the data, right? So if you have Excel open, this is just a good warning to everybody. If you're ever running into issues with the software or whatever, make sure you don't have Excel open because if you have Excel open and it go and you're trying to run another report, it will the pivot table part of this will mess up on your output if it even outputs. Sometimes it just errors out and you can't figure out what's wrong. It's just because you still have Excel documents open. And so you have to understand the software is talking to open AI, the software is building the database, the software is running all this analysis. And then the software is taking that data and putting it into Excel and turning it into a pivot table for you. So if you are messing around in Excel, why it's trying to do any of that, you're going to mess up the report, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I think it's a good uh, lesson to be learned is look at your reports, but when you're ready to go run new reports, um, you know, just make sure it's shut down. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna mess up the creation. But yeah, the system's creating those pivot tables all automatically for you, and it's alphabetizing um, that list. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Harry, this would be the type of stuff you want to cover on a site for roofing, right? And then looks like we have another one: uh, furniture. So reclining chairs. Can we run one of those real quick, Ed, just to kind of show the difference? Yeah, but you would. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely. Run another one for reclining chairs, and then we'll run a small one that we can use in the content module. But yeah, let's let's yeah, do yeah, a but, second but, one just so people can see. Hang on a moment so, so that we get this clear. For that ecom furniture reclining chairs price five hundred plus. What we need to get to is the market level keyword. We want furniture first, then we want reclining chair. Maybe then I don't know if want... they want furniture. Right, they may just be doing reclining chairs. That's why I picked reclining yeah. chairs. Cool. So, but yeah. I just want I just want them to be sure that 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 what you're targeting is the right target keyword, the market level keyword for your niche, rather than something that you're taking a a, a guess at that that's what it would be. That's a so that's here. a good point, Marco. Because obviously, you're just saying. It's a, it's a good point to gauge what are my aspirations? How far do I want to take it? If I'm just trying to run a boutique e-com store that sells reclining chairs only, then yeah, reclining chairs is my, my top level. I still might want some furniture things to help with contextual relevance. But to, to Marco's point, if I was a big furniture store, like I'm thinking like, hey, I'm doing SEO for like an Ashley furniture or something. They have all these different divisions. Reclining chairs is going to be one whole department worth of goods and they're going to have a whole other department so it really is just the level of effort and your aspirations your business aspirations of how far you're going to want to take mm -hmm. yeah he reclining said the reclining chairs, chairs yeah for the thing that's what i was going to say because that term furniture reclining chairs price 500 seems like a real real long tail keyword right and you don't want to do research for a website based on a huge long keyword you want to do research based on reclining chairs so you can talk about all the aspects of it. And then within the page of trying to sell, then you add the price and all that stuff in there to catch those long tails with a bigger page. That's kind of my thoughts. So, okay, I'm going to run this again. Reclining chairs, uh, 25 and 5. And the other thing, you can go as crazy as you want with this, but if you get too crazy, open AI may time out and then if you get too crazy, the, the bigger you get i would say and ed you can correct me if i'm wrong the more terms you put here the farther away you're going to slowly get away from the main term um, that's kind of my thought because if you say reclining chairs and now you want to know the top 500 terms that are related to it well eventually you're going to you're going to run out of terms that are tightly related and you might start getting terms that are a little less tightly related it's just kind of my warning because some people get crazy yeah, that's, a, put, that's a great warning rob a thousand my terms people <laughs> yeah my, my my suggestion would not be to go over 200 in one run because here's the thing you can always run another you know pass or another batch uh and it's better to kind of take it in bite-sized chunks just because you know artificial intelligence anyways eventually has a point of threshold where it likes to start to drift right so if we do things in smaller bites you're going to get more and more accurate data so i mean 25 50 100 all that's great 200 even is probably just fine but if you start to get up to like a thousand like rob said not only is there a good chance you're just going to time out the software cause yourself errors and headaches but it's no longer going to be pulling stuff that's really close to to what you're targeting so you know do it in smaller bite size chunks and and that way you can engineer precisely to what you want and precisely to what your client wants um because everything that it outputs obviously might be part of the definition in these databases but you might not want something you might want to omit it or as marco and i have talked on other previous webinars and stuff is you might have to or include something but instead of including it saying, hey, we offer this thing and it's something that you don't want to offer, you might have to take a contrarian route and still talk about a subject matter, but maybe talk about why you don't do something. So maybe like we did a, in another webinar, we were talking about like web design. And one of the things that was coming up was like WordPress and Drupal. And, and so maybe if you're a web designer, you only work on WordPress, but you should be talking about Drupal to get topical authority. So you might be explaining why you don't work with Drupal and that would cover the context, if that makes sense. It would cover the definition of what, you know, bots and algorithms are looking for, but maybe it's something you're trying to omit out of your business just because it's a preference of yours. So we'll show examples of that as they come up. 
Okay, so here is the reclining chairs that come up. We got for living rooms, for back pain, for elderly, for home theaters, with massaging, gaming, office, swivels, rocking, zero gravity. Like these are the different um, lifts, all that kind of stuff. So, and again, each of those, then you can go in here and you can say, you, know, you got your electric, electric lifts, your heated lift chairs, your leather lifts, your massage and lift chairs, and your power lift. Right, would be kind of terms to have on a lift reclining chair type situation. Okay. So that kind of shows what the analysis does. Let's see if there's any other ones. Or what you want me to run next, Ed. And also, as so, Ed, I guess to build on what you're saying real quick, Ed, sorry. I asked you a question you as you're talking, and I thought about it. But where I was saying, let's say that you got you know, you're doing something very high level, right? Let's say you did furniture and then you got chairs, couches, dinner tables, right? Instead of then doing 25 and 25, right? You could get these top 25 and then for each one of these, right? You could go put this term in as its own analysis, right? So then you can kind of dive down deeper instead of trying to do a 200 by 500 and get it all in one run, you know? Just do these 25 and then go back and do a 25 on this term or a 25 on this term. Uh, you know, terms that you really want to hit hard, that's where then you can you can kind of stack running these reports instead of trying to do one giant report that ends up with so much data in one thing, it almost becomes hard to digest. And, um, yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. And I love, uh, we'll do this on, on webinars with you guys. Like I love when there is an expert, because one of the things I think in content strategy in general, is you got a lot of clients, you got a lot of people who will tell you, oh, well, if you're not a, you know, a specific type of SEO or a specific type of marketer, well, then you don't know enough about my industry to be effective. And our software is going to nullify that because even if we have, a real life expert in front of us. And those will be the the fun ones to do. You get someone who's really well versed in a subject matter, you know, is, is world renowned expert. And we put one of our reports in front of them. I think, because I'm an expert in certain things, right? Everybody's an expert in something, but I think from my experiences, no matter how much brainstorming I've done, I've always been just like dumbfounded or impressed by things that I forgot or things that, you know, how did I even overlook that, that element? So um, to, to Rob's point, like running multiple passes with the software is really where a lot of magic can happen in your strategy. So you can take one of these strategies verbatim, or, you know, you can kind of cherry pick your way through it, which is great too. Um, next thing you want to run Rob Will you, you could do the reclining chairs again or roofing. You'll just have to rename roofing or reclining chairs. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter which example, but instead of running a 25, five run like a two, two yeah. so that we just get a small report and yeah, you'll have to rename um, the roofing file. Otherwise it'll get uh, yeah. overwritten, overwritten in the folder. Yeah. So this is just another thing to be warned. If you're doing the same keyword over and over and over again, just, yeah. Just version out the files because it's going to keep making you new files every time you run the, the software. We'll do three and two. How about that? Yeah, that's fine. Something just manageable that we can make some content with and we'll get the content going in the background while we're talking about the, the output and why we're doing this. So the reason we want a smaller file to show you guys is when we use the content module, the content module is very robust, very powerful you know, writes content across all different platforms and stuff like that. And you'll see quickly how it'll stack up and become a mega task for the software. And it can literally take the software hours to complete an entire camp campaign for you. So, I mean, if you're doing 25 core articles and then one article for your, your top level keyword, and then each one of those articles, you're writing promotional pieces for your different social platforms. I mean, the number of things that the software is doing, the number of calls, and, and the daisy chain of all the prompts and commands that are going back and forth um, just simply cause the software to 
to go slow, right? Like to, it, it's a huge task. So it needs hours to complete it. So the reason we're doing this smaller version is so that we don't sit here for hours with you live. We just want you to be able to see an output faster. So in this example, Rob has now, he's got roofing still, but we just did three nodes and then two, two words for each of those nodes. So uh, we can load this into the content side of the software and give a little bit of a live demo. Cause again, people were asking about the software side. Now, again, I'll have videos for you available up on the website. They are filmed and done. We just have to get them up on YouTube and embedded on the website. But for right now, we'll show, we'll have Rob upload. He'll go into the content module and he'll upload this smaller report that he just ran. So these three buttons to cover these, um, pretty simple. So if you've run some of your analysis reports and you want to now use them to generate content, that's what the first button is. You're gonna be able to upload one of the analysis reports. And again, that report came out of the analysis side of the software, which is why we kept that same button here, that same visual so you don't get confused. So if Rob clicks that analysis button, you'll see in here, he has the option to select a Excel file that the software previously had exported. So he'll find that smaller version Excel file that he just outputted. And then he will suggest how many posts he wants. Probably two is enough, Rob, for just to show people that they're getting variety. And then the platforms, let's not do all of them. Let's pick like title blog article, GBP, Facebook, and then get rid of the rest of them. And then this can run kind of in the background when we show other things. But the reason we're like, quote unquote, running this in the background to explain this again, is it's looking at that analysis file. And then it's going to generate titles for each of those nodes. It's going to generate a blog outline for each of those nodes. It's going to write an article for each of those nodes. And then it's going to promote that article. So if you're trying to market that article on your Google business profile or on your Facebook page, those posts, those marketing posts are being generated from that article. One thing I do like to know in these content interfaces, uh, this is something that Rob can probably show you why it's running. I don't think it'll mess it up. But if you're trying to select things on the right-hand side, there's title, blog outline, article. You let me know if it freezes up, Rob, and we can't show this at the moment. but. Um, if you are selecting the top three, title, outline, yeah. and article, yeah, you're a little frozen. I'm not gonna I see it. It's not a big deal. Well, I'm not going to be able to it's running. Okay. So we can't show it at the moment, but what we want to express to you is you can easily generate titles and blog outlines and not write the articles because you might write the articles in some other tech stack that you use. I know there's a ton of agency owners in here, a ton of SEOs that we know. Nobody does things the same way. So if you are writing your articles elsewhere, but you would like to get you know titles and, and outlines for those articles, the software will do it. And so in short, if you're trying to deselect you know, title or blog outline, you won't be able to until article is deselected. Because in order to get an article, you first have to generate a title and you have to generate a blog outline or an article outline. So they're just those top three, the, the moral of the story is they're connected, right? You can't get the article without the outline and the title. Uh, we'll show that better at another point in time, but what Rob has running right now, uh, he can show the console window a little bit, but it's taking that analysis, it's creating the article titles right now, you see what it's executing. So writing titles for each one of those uh, nodes, and then it will write outlines for each one, and then it'll write articles for each one, and then it'll write the promotions for each one. So all of that is being processed right now. And then the other thing I can do right now, Rob, because I am I made it back to my PC, if I'm in here twice, I think, Marco, if you'll look at me, because I'm on, on my mobile phone and I'm on my desktop, but if you'll let my desktop also be a presenter i'll share because i have okay. some of these done in a big way and i believe i can share just part of my screen i'll stop share then why this is running. okay is, that, is everything in? okay yeah just why it's running and then i can um okay show them some stuff that's done on my blt example and we'll come back to the roofing example but just keep it interesting and keep it going 
portion of the screen. All right, you let me know if you guys can see my screen. Yep, and we see the window that just popped up. All right, so I have the Content Maxima folder. So as you guys are using the module, so if you use the analysis module, you get an analysis scans folder, all of your scans go in there, organized for you. As you use the matrix, all of your matrix reports, your scans go in here and are organized. Same thing happens with your content, right? This content folder inside the software starts to output everything that you've asked for. So I wanna do this side by side. I'll get my software running and then I will go to the content module so I can show you what we were talking about with the selection. So that selection I was just telling you about um, where if I try to unclick title or blog, I can't. It's because article is clicked. If I unclick article, then I can say, hey, you know what? I, I don't care about titles. I'm going to write them myself. I just want the outlines or vice versa. I just want titles. So I can have titles and blog outlines and I don't have to have the article written. But what I can't do is I can't have the article written without the blog outlines and titles. So I just want to be clear. That's why they don't unclick in this case scenario. I have to unclick article first. So you have all these options here. Once you, uh, we'll go through each one of these, but once you get it writing, then the content is exported to your content folder. And then here's what I wanted to show you guys, because this is where it gets really exciting. Uh, people who are uh, simple content creators, this could be a little overwhelming to you, but don't be overwhelmed because we've organized everything for you, uh, made it as easy and simple as possible. People who are into automation, right? If you're doing stuff with zaps and IFF, IFTTT and all that stuff, right? Uh, if you're doing web hooks, if you're doing any type of sheet scripts or automations, anything like that, auto posting, auto blogging, um, this is where it gets exciting. So in my bank, bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich uh, example, I had done 25 nodes. One of the ones I had been talking about was like, for example, American cuisine. So I want to show you quick so you can see the whole thing at the same time. So I'm going to open up the analysis and then I'm going to open up the content folder and I'll zoom in so you see what's happening. All right, so you guys can see the Excel, you can see this folder. So then let me go to content, go to American Cuisine. So you'll notice here, um, let me collapse. American Cuisine has a folder. It's a, also a node in the blueprint here. Bacon is a node in the blueprint, it has a folder. So it's mirroring everything out of the analysis and then in that particular items folder, this is where you're going to get your content for that subject matter. So here's my article. The article is a basic text file. It's nothing fancy as far as, you know, markup or HTML or formatting, but it has Q&A in here. It has the outline at the bottom. It has the whole article in uh, text. This article um, is what is used again to generate social posts. So if I come into this folder, Facebook posts, we'll open this up so you can see it. And I'm starting at the bottom where it's less overwhelming. And then I'm going to show you the more overwhelming file, but the more overwhelming master content map or file is very exciting. So this is a very basic, and I'll zoom in, very basic, just Excel spreadsheet, where it just has the post. So I asked for three Facebook posts to be generated, and then here are those posts. And if it's cut off or truncated at all in your view, just remember to double click in because there's a whole Facebook post in here. It's not just the little bit of text that you see. So it's much longer uh, than what you're seeing at any given time. But again, everything's organized for you into individual Excel files. If we back out of this, so again, this was American Cuisine article, American Cuisine Facebook posts, American Cuisine Google business profile posts. If I back out to the full tree of content here, you'll see that I have this content map file. What this file is, is it's a combination or a merged copy of all of these in one location. So this file, again, will seem overwhelming to someone who's not big into omni-channel or bulk content yet. But to somebody who's doing automation, this file should look amazing to you because 
you basically have all of those nodes. You have titles being generated. You have full outlines. And again, this doesn't look like anything, but if you click in here, that's a full blown article outline in that cell. So this is for people who are more like power users, right? But if you're a simple user, you just have to come in here and copy and paste the text out. So I don't want you to be intimidated because of how many things are in here. It looks very overwhelming, but you'll see along the top here, because I selected to have the outlines generated, the articles generated, that whole article is in here now as text. And your GVP post for that article is in here. And the second one, third one, and then my Facebook post, my Instagram post, my Twitter post, my LinkedIn. Remember I told you I wanted to be a lazy marketer you know, how do I possibly generate content for every single platform and do it in a way that's effective, but mo most importantly, that I can afford to do, you know, not having millions of dollars and a huge team and all that kind of stuff. So whether you're a little guy or a big guy, you can use our software. You know, I look at somebody who, if they were managing, I don't know, let's say retail stores and doing marketing, digital marketing for, let's say, 150 retail locations, like our software for enterprise is just as powerful and effective because imagine the time you could save, you know, if you're in a marketing department in some national headquarters and you have 150 retail stores across the country that you have to generate content for. I mean, you can now do that. And if you're a little guy who's not in a multi-billion dollar brand and who maybe gets hired by them and you, you can now say to them, yeah, I'll handle all your content because I'm just going to automatically generate now, from this point, you're going to have different personalities. You're going to have people doing different things, right? Some people are going to take our content that's in here verbatim. They're going to copy and paste it, and they're going to be done. And that's fine. That's the level at which they want to execute. You know, they can still get results. They can still uh, make money. They can still be successful. Uh, you know, their life is easier. There's going to be a lot of people because we know a lot of SEOs and agency owners and, and small business owners that are in here. You're going to take this now, this master plan, and you're probably going to modify, enhance, upgrade, optimize using, again, other softwares or other processes or other SOPs that you have developed for you and your brand and your clients. So how you use this is up to you, but you just need to see that that master file is being generated for you. So you have all your posts, everything in one location. So if you are doing anything with you know, data porting or routing or automations or scripts or anything, you can use that file. And if you're not, and you just need to get into one particular, you know, subject matter, it's here and it's all broken down and organized. Rob did a great job at making these outputs nice and organized. Um, I'm going to show you just another output here. This one, I just did more social platforms. So I have, again, so my I, platform. I, I, yeah, go ahead. Before we go on on this, can, yes. can we, we deal with some questions? Yeah, absolutely. That people have, I mean, I don't expect them to know how to do it our way, which is in the Q&A section. We can yep. do that in the future, let them know. Uh, but one of the questions is, uh, with the roofing test, the customer may be interested in cost, repair, installation, guarantee, storm, you know, just everything else. So an emergency roof repair. So he wants to know, can you make a website page for free roof inspection? And yes, the answer is yes, of course you can. What I would do, because I, guys, I've been at this for 20 years. So immediately I see that and I think, no, don't, don't do that page. Don't, don't do the URL uh, or the slug free roof inspection. I would want the top level category roof inspection. And I would want to write everything I can about roof inspection. And throughout that page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the CTA get your free uh, uh, roof inspection, whatever now, or, or schedule free. A schedule, no cost. Schedule uh, a, a roof inspection on us, we will come out. So now you can include this free, but you're talking about the top level category and you're adding in the free as a CTA with with the NAP, you know, with the call us or the click to mail. 
so that you're giving the person not only the information that they want about roof inspection, but you're making it easy for that person to just contact you and say, come on out. So there they are. They're calling, hey, you know, I'd, I'd like that free roof inspection. Uh, this is different, like, like, like from emergency where they want to see you now. And that's going to be you're going to give them the estimate like you're going right there. Yeah, I can face this right now. This is how much it's going to be. So so it, it, you have to understand. And I'm sure you do because you, you're working in the space. You have to understand the person that's coming on that page and what it is that, that they're looking for. They want may, Maybe they don't want all of the information about roof inspection, but what I'd like to do for them is give them the information. So first I'm going to answer, yes, you can get a free roof inspection. I'm going to give them the CTA. I'm going to give them the phone number so that if that's what they want to do, they can just click. If they see it in social media or in the GVP, or where else, wherever else you're marketing, click, and they're calling. Otherwise, I'm also going for the top level roof inspection. So the, there are many ways to do this. The way that, that, that I see it in my head is that. And I can always write a companion page, which is free roof inspection, which is the, how we do our free roof inspection, which may be a little bit different information than roof inspection. It's actually the process of how our our workers will, will go out, how we will go over every inch of your room, how we'll do the testing, how how we will follow the, 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 the information that we set up in that roof inspection page to give you our way of doing a free roof inspection so that you can get a free estimate. I hope that made sense. And my Rob usually tells me whether it makes sense or he make or he translates it into into Kentuckiana so that people can understand what's what's in my head. Yeah, I mean, basically, you're saying don't pigeonhole yourself into free inspection. Just they're wanting a roof inspection. And free is a you know type, I guess you could say, of roof inspection. So. Now, uh, that's one. And then the, the other question is, will the article, uh, will the content pass CopyScape plagiarism? So to answer that, we're not running plagiarism detectors and we're not running AI detectors. And the reason for that is if you come to learn from us, we don't necessarily believe in those things. And here's why I say this. You're going to run your copy through CopyScape. Somebody else is going to run their copy through Grammarly. Somebody else is going to run it through something else. To have all of these systems consistently and accurately detect plagiarism or AI content, and I'll say and or, because depending on the person, some people are afraid about plagiarism, duplicate content. Some people are afraid of AI content, right? Penalties, all that stuff, all the, the circulating fear that is out there. So we are not in our generator even remotely worried about these things because the way that we look at it is if you are going to take the content that comes out of Content Maxima and you, to appease your clients and your SOP and your operation, are going to run it through Copyscape for plagiarism, please do so. That's your process. That's what mm -hmm. you need to do for your people, right? So, you know, we will not, and, and we show especially with like AI detection, we show it in other webinars where it's just math, right? Like you build me an AI detector or show me a new AI detector and I will give you AI writing that breaks or busts that detection because it's mathematics. So it's looking for patterns and all you have to do is just disrupt patterns and now it's no longer AI content or now it's no longer plagiarized. So again, it's not that plagiarism and AI content detection can't possibly exist. We're not denying that it couldn't or might exist. But in this case, in our software, it's too many personalities. It's too many different processes and types of companies and policies and, and all that stuff in place where we just can't be involved at that level and, and running plagiarism detectors. Because again, which one would we run? Which one's more accurate? It's just, it's a cesspool that we don't want to get caught in, if that makes sense. So again, if you're going to run 
plagiarism tests or AI tests, uh, you know, more power to you, but it's just not something that we would ever worry about just because, again, I have yet to see a consistent thought leader or software that's that's 100% accurate in any of those things. The second that there's something 100% accurate in any of those things, maybe we'd reconsider, but it's kind of the wild, wild rest, west at this point. You guys are all still with me? You can hear me? Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Perfectly. My answer to that question would be, please run it through Copyscape if that's part of your SOP, and then change any of the sentences that, that, that you see as existing already. That should be part of your process. It's part of our process uh, in the Heavy Hitter Club store. What we sell is entity tune content, and we do run it through plagiarism checkers just to give you uh, the type of content that you expect from us. But that's why we charge the amount of money that we charge for our content because it's not a simple thing to do when you're talking about content at this scale. Your concern when, you, when your content is at this scale should be, am I covering the entity with the, with, with, with the depth and the breadth that it needs for me to become authoritative in the niche? That's, that's my, my, my only concern. At this, I can always go back and do CRO, conversion rate optimization, and look and see if people are coming into my page and exiting the page and try to determine why that's happening. Because that's all Google is, is concerned about. If they're going to send you traffic, is that traffic converting? How is that traffic converting? Are they, are they finding an answer to the query? They sent you a person through a query. And is that query, it, it, was it good enough, good enough in, in quotations, to hold that person on the page and to have that person finish what they started? Did they find a, a, a solution to their problem or pain? Because if they didn't, then I don't care how great and plagiarism free and AI free your content is, according to Google, and which is the, the determining factor is the user. According to the user, your content sucks because they came in and they left. And you took hours to write this beautiful page with content and images and all of these things that you thought, my goodness, I have the best page in the world. And then you go and look at what's ranking number one and you say, what's this piece of crap got that, that I don't have? It's converting, and that's all Google cares about. That's it. That signal. Back to Google. That's the helpful content, and that's all it is. Helpful content is measured by what the user signals that are sent back, by the user signals that are sent back to Google. My take on it, what the hell do I know? That was a good take on it. Um, to keep things rolling here too, because I, uh, Rob, how's that status going on what you had running? Because I don't want to stop share just yet. I want to show one more thing before we run over there. It's working on the GBP post right now. So it's got, okay. So it's uh, still going about five more minutes, 10 more maybe. All right. That's cool. All right. So then let me just show everybody this. Cause again, we're talking about the content module. So when you have content maxima open, you click the content module and it's going to launch three more modules. And so I want to explain this. Uh, there are videos, again, that'll go into each one of these uh, that'll be up on the site and training, but we're here now, and I know people are interested. So what we just had Rob run was he outputted an analysis report from the analysis module, uploaded it here, said the number of posts he wanted, selected his platforms, and started that job. So that's one way that the content module can be used. The other way that the content module can be used is by giving it an existing article. So you might already talking about articles, right? You might already have an article that you've written somewhere else, or again, maybe you just got done running your SOP on an article, and now you want to generate social media posts around that article. So this module allows you to give the software an existing article, 
And then it will create all of your promotional posts for social media for that article. So all you have to do is set a folder name because that's where it'll save it, right? So just use a unique name for the folder. You'll select your article. So um, just to show you like what an article could be, this is a ultimate guide to the perfect BLT sandwich article. It's just plain text. There's nothing fancy in here. There's no markup or HTML or anything like that. I'm just giving this raw block of text to the software by selecting the file to upload, right? And then selecting that article and then telling it, hey, I need two posts and I need posts for these platforms. Please begin. So again, the starting point on this module is the article, not an analysis scan or a blueprint, right? So we can do it from a blueprint. We can generate posts from an article. And then the final step is kind of like using the analysis, but instead of uploading an analysis that's already been done, this is for my lazy marketers, my people who like to just click one button and walk away. So this, what this module does, our content maxima module, is it runs the analysis module for you automatically and then automatically goes into content generation for you. So it's one swoop. So it's basically combining this first module, right? With all of the posts and, and writing. So it's not just gonna run the report, it's actually going to run the report and then generate you all of that content. So if you're lazy or in a rush or just want a simple solution, you'll just come in here, you'll put in your keyword, You'll put in the number of nodes you're going for. And this, just for the record, it's going to write an article about your primary keyword. Then it's going to write an article for each of those supportings because I have articles selected. If I don't want all those articles, I can deselect it, but I could still get the title and the, the outline. So again, if you're going to go run your own SOP or your own article writing or generation in another way, you're going to hire writers, you're going to use a different AI platform, whatever it is that you do, you have the options uh, right here to whether you want the article or not. But just please be aware that if I leave all of these things selected to walk through this, it's going to first generate an article about this, then it's going to go into that report and generate articles on the next 25 items. And each article it completes, it's then going to generate whatever number of social posts I put in here. So if I did this, this is saying to the software, you're technically writing 26 articles because you're writing the primary, 25 more, and then you're writing five posts for each of those 26 articles. So think about that in your mind. It's 26 full-blown articles. So we have to generate 26 titles, 26 outlines, write 26 articles. Then for each one of those, I'm going to generate five. So it would be five Google business posts, five Facebook posts, five Instagram posts. The reason you would want those extra posts, like why am I generating five? Well, you're probably going to want some variety. Like the, if you're using any tool or any writer out there, you're going to say to them, hey, you know, generate me a couple different posts so that I can choose the best one or the one that I like that sounds the best, right? So that's the whole point of this is to be able to generate in bulk. So when you click the start button here and you have again, 25, 26 articles being generated and all those posts for all 26, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of, of messages being generated. So it's going to take hours. The idea behind the software and this module is to do all the work for you so that you can, I don't know, like I said on the webinar the other day, when I click this button, I'm probably going to go out and go play a round of golf. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to have my content folder and I'm going to have everything that's been done for me automatically. And then me, just because I, I'm a marketer who likes more control, I like to take things further. Then yeah, at this point, this is what I would say is like my baseline. And now I'm gonna take all of this content and all this messaging and all of these articles and everything. And then I'm gonna run it through everything else that I do. And whatever that is, it's different for you as it is for me, as it is for the next guy. So, you know, we're giving you that baseline because where people really struggle in digital marketing is it's where do I begin, right? How do I know I'm going in the right direction and where do I begin? And then ultimately, 
getting a whole campaign together and having it like this organized, like, can you imagine that this is, you know, your blogs for the next, let's say you were doing one per week, right? This could be the next 26 weeks of blogs for you all set up and ready to go so that you just pass this off to your marketing assistant or your social media person. You say, Hey, look, the article's written, the blog posts are, are, are in here and the social posts are in here. You can spruce them up a little bit. You could add some emojis. You could do whatever it is that you do, but it's all here baseline so that instead of starting from zero, you're starting, I don't know, I don't want to put a percentage to it, but 75, 80%, 90% of the way done in your process. And again, maybe it took an afternoon because you did this huge report for a client, but how long would it have taken you? I know how long it would have taken me. How long would it have taken you to write 26 articles and promotional posts for every single platform that you're on about that article and to do the research and to plan it all out and to write the outlines and the titles and to, to actually do it. I mean, if 26, especially if you're a small little shop, a one man shop or just a few people, I mean, that could be your whole month's work, maybe multiple months work. Now, if you're doing much bigger things, your content at scale, 26 articles sounds like nothing, but on either end of the spectrum, no matter how you slice this, it's a ton of work and it's all being daisy chained together and engineered for you automatically. So this output, whether you choose to run with it as is, or whether you choose to take this as your baseline and then go do bigger, better, more amazing things, optimize, edit, bring in experts, bring in quotations for these articles from real life, you know, experts in, in your industry. I mean, whatever level you're going to take this, you can now, but this is the gift that we give you with the Content Maxima software is it's just a starting point that's so much further to the finish line than anything else. I hope that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And I think one of, one of the main reasons for this is because of the personalities. You want to be the lazy marketer that pushes a button. And I know Rob, he doesn't want to write. Marco loves to write, but but guys, I, those of you who are here don't know, and don't know, I, I studied to be a, a, a literature professor in college. That, that was, I have a degree. I, I, I never really got into it. I went elsewhere, took enough classes to go to a, a business graduate school, right? So, so for, for my MBA, I, I went to business administration. But the thing is, I'm anal retentive when it comes to my writing. I get stuck on one word. I will get stuck in, 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 or one sentence where I say, well, I should change this. And then I'll start writing, and, and, and then I'll remember another sentence that I could have phrased differently, and I'll go back, and then next thing I know, I'm two, three hours in, and I'm not finished with, with uh, uh, an email that's going out to our group announcing, let's say, the, the July 4th sale. That's how I am. That's how I am. So, so it's three different personalities that need this, <laughs> that need this because we all do. Uh, projects on the web as so we need this content and we need it this way to deploy quickly or else it would take forever it just would um also just real quick i'm just going to stop sharing on my screen um i can stay on the webinar here past one if we have more questions but i just want to let you know if rob if you want to take over and show your screen or something else um, i'm done controlling that box is all i'm saying okay thank you something i want to add to and I was on the it's exponential whenever you do the one that he's got up right now. Right. So if you do that word, like you said, you're going to write 26 articles and then you're going to write five social posts. So that's five social posts per article. So it's not five GBP posts. It's five GBP posts times 26. So you're actually going to be writing 126 Google business posts. And then if you do all of those, you're going to be writing whatever that is. Let's just say it's 10. So my math's easier. You're going to be writing 1,260 posts on top of the 26 articles. So I don't know how fast some of you guys play golf, but you might be able to get a couple rounds of golf in when Ed said go play around the golf. Because you got to think about this gets exponential when you go this, give me a word, and then you come back and it's all done, right? It may literally run 8 to 12 hours, okay? We created this for that type of situation. 
the problem you can run into, and I've tried to code this the best I can, is it creates the folders and it outputs the data as it goes. But if in the middle of all of that, open AI hiccups and you're halfway through, there's no way to then go back and say, okay, restart and give me the second half after open AI hiccuped. Okay. So just be wary of that. Um, so what you could do, and this is why we have the three different modules, right? You can do the analysis. You can look at that, see what it looks like, make sure it matches what you'd want to write about. Then you can upload based on the analysis and you could do just say the first three parts, title, blog, and article, and you could get your 26 articles written. And then you could go do your own SOP to get rid of the AI, the, or do whatever your SOP is for content and finalize your article to get your, whatever checkers you want to pass and whatever, you know, you want to tweak it and do whatever you want to do, right? Then individually, you can come and just upload one article at a time and get the social post for each article, right? So you can kind of daisy chain them to get the final output, which is the, you know, simple way, give it a word and go away for 10 hours and come back and it's all there, right? But our articles aren't being 100, they're not, we're not like searching Google, pulling in what's the keywords it should be that, you know what I mean? We're not optimizing it like all these other tools do that. That's not the job of this. So they're going to be rough draft articles that you may want to modify and read and stuff like that. But if you do the route that I'm talking about, then you don't, you minimize uh, the time that the tool is running all the time. And you can then minimize the possibility of losing if open AI hiccups and you can kind of snipe different things. So do the analysis, get your 25 things. Then you can go write the 25 articles and, you know, then optimize all those articles and then upload each article one at a time using the article module and get your social media posts. Right. Because if you do one blog a week, you don't need to do week 52's social media posts today because you're not going to be posting that blog for another 52 weeks type of situation. So it kind of helps you to this. This has it's this is more of a strategic way to use the software versus what the software is capable of doing. But I just want you guys to think about it because if you go to this one here that he just showed you, we call it kind of the lazy man's way, which I'm gonna not I'm not lying here. That's what I do a lot of times because as Marco <laughs> said, I don't even look when I'm doing some things. I don't even read what is on the screen. It could say the most jacked up stuff. I'm posting it. I don't care. Right? I don't <laughs> stare at the words like Marco does. Because a lot of my stuff's not, <clears throat> and I say that because it's my website. It's not a customer's website. I don't have clients. I'm not, right? So I'm not beholden to the client calling me and saying, what the heck? You spelled the name wrong or what? They're getting mad because this mentions some other company's name or blah, 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 right? I'm not going to, if that happens, I'm basically calling myself to get mad, right? So what I'm saying is when you have a customer, or a client, you're going to want to kind of look at what you're putting on their website a little more than I do. <laughs> so, so that's more, that's kind of a strategic way to use the uh, abilities that we're giving you with the software. And uh, one final thing to add to that too, Rob, it's a quote that I always like to hear. Um, it's quality is subjective, but how it makes you feel isn't. So like if we both put our best foot forward and we write, the best possible blog we ever could. And we have all the best graphics and the best titles, the best optimizations. We've done everything that we possibly could. The feeling at the end of that, we both feel really good about what we did, but how we got there and the, the items that we use, the process we use is totally different. And that's why, you know, the quality or the output of it is subjective. And yeah, if you, if you are more concerned you're going to take it and polish it further. If you're less concerned, you're just going to run with stuff. And that's that's cool. And we're trying to play that line because we have customers on both sides of the equation. We have people who are really passionate about their content structure and, and every, you know, every sentence and period and grammatical, you know, element. And then we have other people who are doing mass stuff, right? They don't care because they're putting up a thousand pages at a time and they don't have any consideration to whether they forgot a comma or not because they're just in a totally different uh, ballpark of what, what they're trying to accomplish. So, Okay. So my execution is complete. Ed, what do you want me to show? Just what it, 
a small yeah, one. Yeah, I just wanted like them just to, as to overwhelming. Show, it, show it on a different computer, show the folder uh, generated itself, and just show how it organized itself again, just so that they can see another batch of them that have been run. Okay. Can you stop share? I'm not sure if um, I can kick you off or not. Yeah, I can stop share. Give me a second. I got to go run and do it. Okay. Yeah, Gonna be one maybe, minute. Or maybe Marco can kick you off. Marco can, can stop kick me. Share? It won't let me stop your share. Maybe Marco can. If not, I got it. I'll be right there in two seconds. It's just walking ahead into the office now. Go ahead and share, Rob. Okay. Share. Share screen to share. Okay. So now you're seeing my content module. Oh, yeah. I can see. Oh, I didn't realize that. Execution completed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize I could see my own screen over here on this other thing to see what. Anyway, never mind. I'm getting sidetracked by Zoom. So it's run through. It did the, um, I don't even remember what we did, three social posts for those three times two. And if so, if I go into my folder, right, here's my content. So if I open this up. I did roofing. You open that up. Here's the four articles that it wrote, right? It wrote one for roofing, and then it wrote an article, or it created a whatever you told it to do, whether social media posts, whether articles, whatever you told it to do, it's organizing them based off of you know well i'll show you this one in a minute sorry wrong deal but it's organizing them based off of this right so if i go into article or into the roofing here's my article that it wrote that i can open here's the facebook post for that same article here's the gbp posts for that article right so now i'm going to go back to the overall roofing here Here's if I did the roof repair. Again, it breaks it down into the articles, and then it's got Facebook posts, GBP posts. I can do roofing contractors, same thing. Art, it breaks it all down so you can get each piece individually. Uh, same with roofing materials. We'll open again. But then here's the content map. So this is showing everything that it did. So if I open it up, you can see here's the keywords. Here was your main keyword. Here's the primary word. So it, a roofing, roofing material, contractors, and repair. So it did everything you told it for these four terms, right? Here's the title it did. Here's the blog outline. Here's the article that it did for this term. I'll kind of make just this one bigger so you can see them better. Format cells, alignment, wrap text. Okay. Okay. So now I'm just looking at the roofing one. The same amount of data is in each one of these, but I'm just showing you. So for roofing, here's the title. Here's the outline. Here's the complete article in this cell. Here's GBP post one, right? So this is the whole GBP post for one. Here's number two. Here's Facebook post one. Here's Facebook post two, okay? So it puts everything in one huge content map. So then... You could then add to this if you wanted, right? And this is just me thinking how I would do things if, you know, in the world of Rob, right? So what I would do is I could do insert. And I could say, you know, posted. And I could say yes here, right, if this whole line's done. Or the other way you could do it is say, okay, the article's been posted. And we turn it green. GBP post one is out. GBP post two was done. GBP po or Facebook one was done. Facebook 2 was done. And you can kind of even use this however you want to do it. There's so many different ways to track these things, right? We all have different ways. But even just going in here and doing this, right, and seeing how it worked or, or tracking whether this piece has been – so at a quick glance, right, if it looked like this, let's get rid of this second one here, no fill, right, and you had this. Is green, and this one's green, and then this is green. You can, at a quick glance, you can say, okay, these have all been posted. This GBP post, I mean, it doesn't make sense because the article's not posted, but you get my drift. At a quick glance, you can see based on my content map, I've got this whole line is done. Now I'm ready for this article. Okay, for this article, we've done article. Then we did, say, this one and this one. Turn those green. I know I have these left to post, on and on. So you can even use this to kind of, track what you got going on and again this is more of a how to utilize this to help track and then here with the nodes 
it creates the same thing that you see from the analysis, right? It's showing you here was the main keyword, here was the primary nodes, and then all the secondary nodes that, you know, it brought. So that's this kind of where Ed was talking about. I'm not going to save that. But if you get into automation, right, I did it this way so that if you know how to code or automate, you could then upload this sheet and say, okay, I want on this date to take this content from E2, this cell, and post it to my WordPress blog. And then I want to take the content from F2 and use Zapier or whatever and push it to my GBP post. Same with this one. You, you know what I mean? I set it up so it'll all be here for you guys that are. I mean, that's what I would like to do. I don't have anything coded for that at this time. I don't have any plans to make it. But for you, there are some people that follow us and could use this where they could literally just upload this one sheet. And then all the automation could happen where they've scheduled all this stuff out. So that's kind of why it, it can look real messy when you have, because you could imagine 25 or five GBV posts on here and five times 10. So this would go out to who knows, probably be triple letters by that point. And then you'd have 26 to 28, um, or I mean, 26 articles if you did a 25. So you can see how this can get real big. So, but that's what this content mapping uh, file is. It basically combines everything that's within these folders into one file. Um, so in one place, you can see everything. For those that like more organization, right? You go into roofing, go to Facebook posts, and here's just the Facebook posts, right? So if you're more, um, you know, where you want better control, because then you could say, you know, published, uh, links built, you know, things like that. You could use each one of these individually then to track things. Okay, we posted this one on, you know, June 1st. Links were built June 8th. You know, maybe we do a press release to this post. Press release was on, you know, June 25th. Right. And then you could start to use this to even track things even more. So that's why we gave you all the different outputs. It's just different views of the same out information as that one large sheet. But for those that like to track this, keep track of it, you know, things like that. You could add the URL, right? What was the URL, the GBP post? So this would be your GBP or your Facebook post, sorry. Facebook.com, right? And you could put the URL here that matches to that. So now in one place, you could have all your Facebook posts for that article with all your links for that article or all your Facebook posts that go back to that article in one place. And then you can quickly just go grab them. But again, we can't do that because obviously we ain't posting it, but that's just ways you can use these sheets to help track your, your stuff as you go, which is why we gave you so many different outputs and options. All right. That's why I got. So, Ed, you got any more that you wanted to jump into? I know we didn't get into Matrix yet. Um, no, it looks like Harry's asking about Matrix. And, and real quick, I'll just say on all these files, like like Rob was just saying, like this big content map that's overwhelming or will be overwhelming to a lot of people who aren't doing automation. What I want you to realize is that each one of these files, whether it's the blueprint, whether it is the matrix file, whether it is all these content maps or outputs, like we still have a million other things that we can show you on how to use these and, and even putting these back in AI. And as Rob said, maybe it's coding new things and all that. But again, we're so early in this process, we don't want to overwhelm people. We have a lot of stuff in the pipe that can come from all of this because essentially what we're building is a whole new you know, way of doing things. It's, it's a, we're going to build a community around this, especially that matrix module with all the different, you know, models, language models and analysis types that we can leverage to then further tweak and enhance your content in, in new ways. So one of the things Harry was just asking was, okay, I want to see a, a trigger words list in order for us to do that. We would have to run the matrix model or excuse me, module by itself because that's the module that's going to come up with those trigger words. The analysis module and the content module work hand in hand. That matrix module is not fully integrated yet in full transparency because that has 63 language analysis types in it. To run that file alone, 
I mean, that matrix file, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but that can take 45 minutes to an hour on a machine. It might go faster, depends on how lucky you are, but um, it's such an intensive data farm, right? Because it's running 63 different language types that in order to get that trigger word list, you know, that one module alone has to stand on its own two feet and be separated just because the, the programming and the processing power of it, it just wouldn't all hook up yet. There's yeah. ways to use it. There's a lot of methodology and strategies that we're going to give you and ways to use all of those columns in the matrix module. But I just want to be clear that it's a standalone because it's 63 different types of, you know, executions that are being run on one word. So it by itself is its own world. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, I see I this as the, as the perfect oh, point to, to, to put an end to this with Mohammed with an answer to Mohammed's question. Okay. Well, Mikey has a, has a question because I think we've covered everything. And if, if you want to see the matrix in action, go to our YouTube channel, which is the heavy hitter club. And you'll be able to. Here, I'll give you. It's it's on the website too now, Marco, under the Matrix solution. So the video is up there as well. So it's on the YouTube channel and it's on the website on the Matrix page. Okay, but I'll just put it here. Go there, and you you can see the the Matrix in action. You can see the other. Uh, just go to the playlist. It's there. Everything is everything is there. And Mo, he's making a confession. He says that he never used it yet. He wants to start using the program, but he hasn't signed up. He says, can you send a relevant product page and any offer, especially if one exists? Well, you were in the charity webinars, Mo. If you go back and you watch Ed's Content Maxima presentation in the charity webinars, there's a coupon code in there. And then you just go to contentmaxima.com to apply your coupon code. I don't know. I, I forget what that is. 50% off or something like that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if it'll work because it's in the old system. Oh, uh, okay. Well, then maybe you miss it. I don't know. But we gave that away. 50% off. But if you go to just contentmaxima.com, you can find the product page on there, and there's sure. all the things about it and stuff like that. And thanks, everybody, for joining us and for asking questions. And for uh, We'll be doing this. We'll be doing more of this. I'm, I'm, I, I want to do this once a month as part of the just growing our our community the free uh facebook group once a month q a it doesn't have to be content maximum it can be whatever but we'll keep it at, yeah, a, at, at this high high level q a i'm not going to do any training or anything like that but i i'll be happy to answer questions yeah we want to help people with their content strategy it's not all just about using the software but it's about you know, winning, winning online and, and being successful. And then like I promised you guys, I have more videos coming and then I will, everyone's asked about it. I will go through that matrix column by column and I will go through it platform by platform. So there is a lot of videos, a lot of sessions that we can have to go through all that data. Just know it's coming. And so keep your eyes on the YouTube channel, keep your eyes on the training page and we're just going to keep making videos and we're going to build this community and we're going to get people showing each other because we're just starting, right? So we're going to have other people showing how they're doing it and doing their do, right? And seeing how it fits into their process. And you all get ideas about that and how you can use it. Because to Rob's point, even just that one file, there's so many ways that one file could be used, but it's just learning and seeing how other people are using it in order to open your eyes. So, All right, then. With that, thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon. And catch yeah. you on the next one. I'll Thanks be posting in, in the Facebook group. Bye, everybody. See you guys. Bye.